we just had what might be the coldest sleep of our lives. Yeah, I, I think it's like 20 something, low 20s this morning. It's probably not that cold for you northern folk, but for us <laughs> southern boys, yeah, it's, we don't like it. That was brutal. Okay, so we're about to pull into uh, downtown Indianapolis to grab some breakfast. And despite the coolant link we found this morning, everything seems to be doing okay. Our coolant levels look good, so we're just pressing forward and hoping that we don't have a catastrophe, but so far so good on the coolant. How's she feeling, Jake? Feels good. I smell coolant. It's definitely coming from somewhere, but yeah. worst case. Drag this puppy out of the road. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. That worked. So if you're doing the math, there's two of us and four coffees. Okay, we just made it to Mark's house. We were just outside of Indianapolis and he's showing us his garage. Cool. So then, uh, after I got out of college uh, a few years and I started taking it apart. And... Did I hear you say this was your first car, Mark? Yeah. 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 What year is it? 68. What year did you buy it? I got it in 70... Five, 75. So it's an original 396. Wow, big boy. This is that picture I was telling you guys about that I just took it in shots because I couldn't get it all in one and I, uh, wow. I didn't do the panoramic thing, but this was uh, my dad's club in 1952, the Mohawks. I was telling you about that's the first black club uh, in Indianapolis. So Man. there was 53 bikes wow. in there, and then that's my dad's bike right there. How can you tell? Uh, he pointed it out a long time ago, and then I'll always tell you, he said, mine's the one that's standing straight up. <laughs> Plus it has a windshield and yeah. all the accessories on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's downtown Indianapolis, which is looks a lot different now, but I remember growing up seeing that sign there, the straight auto sign, the seven up sign. Was there for years. Is any of this there? It is. Some of these buildings are still here. This is IUPUI, uh, the college campus. But I'm not sure exactly where this was taken. And that was 1952, huh? Yep. So, so that was before the bike got disassembled for Chrome. Is that accurate? He had... I'm not sure. It's hard to tell on that picture. I know, I know. He only had it a couple of weeks before he tore it down. I mean, it, it, it. it looks shiny in that picture. Yeah. You, do you, know, you don't know what color it was originally? It was chartreuse green, he said, when he got it. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. Green on the top of fenders and white on the sides, that old style, which mm -hmm. is the same color. I, uh, kind of paint match I had my, uh, my 79 painted. Uh, so this is the magazine you guys can have these. I got a couple of these, but this, uh, Guy started back in the early 80s, um, kind of a local guy, but he traveled around the Midwest and places uh, just doing stories on people. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, my club is in here, and my dad had passed. My dad passed in 1980, so this is 83. But there's some pictures in here. Right. Tell me you bought the time machine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's Mark. You can open the door and check it out. Oh yeah. It's my chopper. No way, man. Isn't that cool? What is that, a Honda? 750 Honda. Yeah, that's right. That's my club, the Rough Riders Club. Back in the day, we just won the best, largest attending club at that field meet. So that's you? That's me. <laughs> Wow. In fact, that's that vest hanging over there. No way. Yeah. 
These guys came from North Carolina and selling them my dad's bike. Maybe you should swap out the bike for the van, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now a bike's more desirable than the van. Yeah. yeah. That wouldn't be a fair trade. So what we, I mean, what's the plans for it? Keep it as is, untouched. Get it Straight running. up untouched, just oh, like oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We got to preserve the history. Jeez. When Mark's mom passed, I remember Mark coming and telling me, you know, where you where the bike was in the garage. I mean, just that history alone, right, is where he pushed the bike into the garage. It was where he found the bike, you know, all those years later. Still the same spot. Like 40 years. Yeah, yeah you moved it into that, stopped. And, and, yeah. yeah. And left it there for four years. Mm -hmm. It's like a time capsule. I can't wait. I really can't wait. I'm so excited to see it. <laughs> I've yeah. only seen photos. Yeah, I have only seen photos. And uh, just like I mean, the story behind it, though, like pictures your dad, you know, with the bike and you. Yeah. 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 That, I love the picture. One of your mom, there's a, like a truck, like a bread truck behind it. And then yeah. your mom's with the bike. I yeah. think that's your mom, right? Yes. And then there's another, that's probably my favorite one. My second favorite, I, I guess it's all you kids. All you kids are sitting on the bike, three or four of you. Oh. That was in our living room. He would put the bike in the living room everywhere. He put the so bike that in was, the That room. was my cousin's. Yeah. 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 Don't worry we'll about the Christmas tree, kids. We got the, the bike. Door, up the steps. My wife said, Your dad must be a real nice guy because there's no way in hell you're keeping our people. <laughs> so it would be out in a big field and they would have all these different types of races. Mm -hmm. Going on, they would have uh, activities, band show, yeah, activities for the kids, um, club competitions. Who had the largest club? Who was the best dressed club? So back then, the uniforms I show you in those pictures, like my mom and my stepmom in their uniforms, they would put on their uniforms for be judged against the other clubs for the best dressed club. You know, so. And then they had obviously the different types of races. They right, had, like, slow races. Yeah, through the around the cones. Yeah, that type yeah. Of stuff. yeah, spin and drag. They still, they still races. Do that stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that was, that was that's what I did growing up. So that was a, a guy that I knew in the city. He just passed away about maybe three, four years ago. Look at all the lights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a cool bike. In fact, it was his grandson that had the, the magazine in my classroom when I yelled at the kids. <laughs> there it is. This is the rough ride. This is, we had just won that trophy right there. This oh my is, gosh. This is in Danville, Illinois. This is the best dressed one? Feel me. No, this is the largest club. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. That's my uncle that had the van. That's my cousin there. A lot of my family was in the club. My cousin, president, until the club closed down. So he was in. I wish you guys could have just could have met him, but he went out wow. to dinner Friday. But uh, he was the president of the club for probably well over 40 years. Wow. They just shut the club down. Yeah, so you're saying four months ago or something? Yeah. Okay, so we just met Mark, and Mark is a gem of a human being. He's a super cool guy. He was a school teacher for years and he's just really fun to talk to. What you're hearing right now is Mark's Gen 1 Camaro. He's gonna drive to his cousin's house and uh, show us where he parks his dad's motorcycle. So cool. 
cool light on as a little reminder. Yeah. Yeah, so the way that these switches work, the first one is just accessories. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, it's just ignition. So you can start it with that first one. So you put that sticker on there to make them remember to turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. So these are, I, I'm assuming these are like flamethrowers. Flamethrowers, yeah. <laughs> but he would just start tinkering with the bike a little bit. So these were not on there initially many years ago. He put those on, so. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a shield like this before? Yeah, they fold up. They roll, roll up. up. Lift That's up. right. They call it a um, Hatfield or something. Some with an H. Oh my gosh, even like all this accessory stuff here. Yeah. And all the t people in the Mohawks club had this Indian head that light up, that lit up on their bikes. So that there's a light, there's a bulb in here. There's a bulb in there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So everybody in the club had that yeah. on their bike. You're in Mohawk. Yeah. It really is like a time machine, man. It's, it still has like the same crust on it. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. I put oil in the cylinders and would kick it over, you know, every few months or so for the 40 years it was over in there, but never started it after I wrote it in there. Matter of fact, still got compression. You, you hear a big thump when you... Really? Yeah. It probably won't take much to get it going. I wouldn't think so. Yep. She spins over. Wow. The lock's still on there. I love it, man. It's really cool. All that custom work. So did your dad do a lot of this work to it? <coughs> yes. Yeah. This and this rack, because it came like here. They had extended it from here back. This was back, well, this is an aftermarket. Aftermark. Period correct aftermarket yeah. part, yeah. From that's there right. to there. Yeah. So then he had this made out of California, some kind of way, somewhere. And it, it was like, you remember the old cars had the continental kit uh -huh. with the touch spare tire? Uh -huh. That was what they were supposed to simulate. Yep. He used to ride my brother and I at the same time. He'd be in the middle. My brother, who was two years older than me, would be in the back, and I'd be up here in the front. He'd be riding three of us with uh, with no helmets. <laughs> yeah, you can see where I hit it a little bit with uh, some oh, chrome wow. polish. Yeah. So that chrome is from 1952. Want to get her out? We can get her out. Yep. You guys brought some tight ends, didn't you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. She rolls nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First time seeing daylight in a few years, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Front brake kind of works. Hey Matt, can you get a picture of Mark and I? Like, just right here, right yeah. where we pulled it out. Back in the 50s, even with cars, it was just adding as much accessories as you could. Oh, nice. And this is like a time capsule from that, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, And then choppers started coming into play. Yeah, late 60s yeah. through the 70s. I'm gonna grab some shops real quick. Try. Real well, the whole trailer should slightly. Is this something that you could use my help with? Uh, I think we can get it. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna plunge her up over. Yep. Ready? One, two. <laughs> Alright, Matt, we need your help. <laughs> you just need weight on the front. Yep. Go to the front. Here's, all right, there we go. All right, I'll lock it. Put that pin in, yeah. There it goes. 
All right, your pin's in. Okay. Just out of curiosity, let's uh, let's see what's in there. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> that turds or something. Looks like a jacket. This right here is that a jacket? It's a coat. <laughs> I smell rep. Coop. T shirt. Wow. Uh -huh. I wonder what this is. Is this some sort of case? I think it's some kind of toolbox. There's a toolbox on that side. What does that say? Something boat? Dreamboat. That's what he called the bike. He had that main. No way. Yeah. That's the title of the video. Dreamboat. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yep. There it is. We're gonna make sure that name uh, carries on. That's the bike is still named Dreamboat officially. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Matt, look. Rags. What is that? Paint? Is that what it says? Okay. Joint repair kit. <laughs> it's an oil pressure switch. Right there. Which is probably what that is. Aha! Uh -huh. Spark plug. Spark plug tool. Yeah. yeah. There should be a spark plug holder on there. Is that a rain jacket? No. Maybe at one time. Maybe a bike cover? Is it too small? Treasures. Oh, that leather bag's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a jacket at first. Yeah, I did too. So you gotta drive away with it. <laughs> Real man. I can't thank you enough. This is this is amazing. Look at this thing. Hey Mark, does it fit me all right? <laughs> I'll tell you this, you're the first white guy I ever sit on that motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably only, I bet you only maybe five guys have ridden that bike in the entire time it's been around. Really? That's including me, my dad. Uh, there's another guy, Henry Minter, that lives here in town. He's about 87 years old. And then a couple of mechanics down the south side of Harlem. Nobody would ever 
Let's ride it. Ride that bike with my dad. I uh, my brother and I. Even like uh, when I was pushing it down here and turning it, there's there's very little turning radius because of all this stuff. Yeah. Everything's interfering, so like you got to take really wide turns yeah. with it. Yeah. Jake here just bought a 1952 pan head. It doesn't feel right yet. Uh-uh. It doesn't. I'm still like honestly in shock. And, and at the same time I kind of feel bad. I really do. Like because the son's pretty sad about selling it. Understandably. Be safe. We'll do. Care, my baby. We, will. <laughs> we will. We will. We will. He's watching. Oh, poor guy. Okay, we are at Southside Harley Davidson in Indianapolis right now, and this is the dealership that Mark's dad, Tyree, bought this 1952 Panhead originally. Now, this isn't the same building, they've moved locations. But this is the same dealership. Same owners. Same owners, even. Yeah. So, uh, Mark, first of all, is an absolutely incredible person. We had an amazing day with him. We didn't even expect to spend the entire day. We got this motorcycle this morning, and it is now, I think, 6 p.m. Um, so we've been with him for probably 10 hours. Um, amazing person. Loved hearing his story. Loved hearing about family, his father, the history of this bike, and the clubs. Um, yeah, so this is our rig. Got the van. We bought we bought the van. We bought the trailer, and we bought the bike. So all three in a day, uh, twenty four within twenty four hours, we bought all three of these things. Um, the Midwest has treated us incredibly well. Thank you guys. Thank you Midwesterners. Uh, let me show you the bike and what I know about it, or what I think I know about it. So uh, again, nineteen fifty two Panhead. Well, from Southside Harley Davidson in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, it's kind of why we wanted to stop here, just to show you guys, talk about the history of it. Um, so bought in 52, was disassembled in 53 by Tyree. He um, got the tanks chromed, front fender chrome, rear fender chrome, um, made this continental type accessory, um, added this to his seat, Ty. Ty was his nickname. Um, Back in the day, it had leather bags on it. Sometime, I would imagine, in the in the six or in the seventies, these bags got added to it. Um, I mean, it really is still a pretty original bike. It's all original sheet metal, original speedometer, original seat pan. The seats obviously been recovered. Um, original handlebars. Everything still rotates, which is pretty impressive on both sides. Um, see right here the bike is called the dreamboat i think that's an absolutely fitting name for it 
So this, uh, come to find out the Indian that was added here is, was his father's club, which was the first African American motorcycle club in in Indianapolis, in Indianapolis and, yeah. or maybe Indiana. The US Mohawks, Club. right? Yeah, so the Mohawk Club. So here's the uh, Indian that all of them had on their motorcycle. Um, to the best of my knowledge, what I think happens is basically you can press a button which stops, I, th I think the button's right here. You can press this button which stops the ignition from firing, sends fuel through the exhaust. As soon as you let off, it sends a spark because there's extra gas in the exhaust. As soon as it gets a spark, from these spark plugs, sends a flame basically um, out the exhaust. So it's got flamethrowers. So when Mark was talking about it, he said he remembers being a kid and always having his dad do it. And the fire came to about this far, four feet out from the exhaust, which is pretty incredible. And we're gonna get it to breathe fire again. I'm not sure what it, what this contraption is, but um, pretty interesting that he just yeah. thought different things were cool. Oh, this is, a, this is an incredible feature. So the spot lamps, he turned around, which it's kind of worn out and you can't really see it. There's photos in here. I'm assuming these were photos of his kids or of his wife or some, some family related photo, which is awesome on both sides. Um, again, turn them around and then put the photo in there. The horns uh, were added later. This is the, uh, this is the ignition on, so. <laughs> basically put a jumper cable to this cable here and you're ready to go um but yeah so that's the bike 1952 panhead really incredible story really incredible history really i'm honestly blown away and honored to have this bike and um excited to uh to hear her come back to life <laughs> both hands on the wheel at all times all right, so, so so that's it. I mean, we're we're on route. We're we're heading home, and we're we're very excited. Ho hopefully, uh, n nothing else uh, pops yeah. up unexpected. Yeah, hopefully, there's nothing else to really report about other than all right, we made it home. Yeah, yeah. And if the next time you hear from us is making it home in Charlotte, that's our ideal scenario. We hope you don't hear from us again. <laughs> we are smelling some coolant. There is a slight coolant leak that we are aware of, but it doesn't seem too severe. We're crossing our fingers. It doesn't uh, throw a wrench in our spokes uh, heading home. So uh, stay tuned. Van won't start. We just fuel, fueled up and go to crank the ignition and absolutely nothing apart from we've got some action on the dash lights. So we've checked the ground to the battery. Looks good. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give the old uh, starter a tap while we're uh, trying to start and see if that works. So interesting thing about this van, most of you van folks will uh, not be surprised at all, but uh, someone like us who uh, is not well versed in the van world is pretty uh, astounded by the fact that you can access as much as you can from the cabin. So we pull this thing back and we're looking at the air cleaner here, there's the carburetor on this side. Can't really tell what's going on. Let me get a light. Here, there you go. So there's the starter. We're going to, we got a ratchet strap. We're going to bang on this thing and see if we can wake it up. This is a Hail Mary without a doubt. Ah, same issue. We've got accessory lights. Nothing else will happen. It doesn't even try. Got everything but a, a starter. So next I'm gonna try to figure out how we can bypass it, jump it, bypass the solenoid. Uh, I'm gonna try to bypass any of the wiring and go direct to the solenoid. Um, so I got this little adjustable wrench and this microfiber towel to add some insulation. Now I'm gonna jump these. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. We're going. Yeah the old uh, adjustable wrench trick. Okay, it's 1.30 a.m. We're passing through Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. We're gonna keep pushing forward. We're gonna try to get to Charlotte tonight. 
worst case scenario, we crash on the side of the road. Not crash as in wreck, crash as in sleep. Oh yeah, so we didn't cut the van off. Silver solenoid's bad. So our last gas stop, we had to uh, bypass the solenoid and touch the remote wire contact to starter cable contact um, to get her started. So we could start it again if we needed to, but it's a little bit yeah. And the trailer takes a look? pretty good, uh, pretty good bump. But everything's all right. We made it. We're in Charlotte, somewhere around 5 a.m. We're so exhausted. It's we're delirious at this point. Just no sleep. On the way here, we we realized we haven't even eaten since breakfast yesterday. Sailed right through lunch. Sailed right through dinner. Didn't even realize it. We were just so wrapped up in all the excitement of the day, getting this motorcycle. We just forgot to eat. We got off the interstate and we started feeling the clunk under power specifically. What do you think it is, Jake? Transmission. <laughs> Transmission maybe. I don't want to say it, but yeah. that's what it feels like. It really does. Let's go. I'm gonna go drive it up there just around All right. and see. If see if you can recreate the problem. Yeah. Here she is, she's home. Right next to Bronco Bronze, our other 52 pan. All right, with that, uh, good night or good morning, whatever it is. Peace.